This is a very cool use case, again, created by Chris Hanskins. And the objective is to create a rule that fires when somebody inside our network is communicating to a command and control site. So in almost every corporate environment, you have on your DMC some sort of a proxy device. In our example, we're going to use a blue coat, but it can be any, any other one. And from it, you're going to get the logs from that device into Curator. And as you know, all you need to do is point those logs into Curator's uh, IP address and Curator auto discover them. And it's really to uh, work on it. So anyone who wants to go out to the internet needs to go to that proxy. And when the idea is when they go into a site that is a malicious site, let's say it is a, a known command and control site, what you want to do is actually fire an offense when such an event happens. So one simple way of actually doing this is to write a rule that works with a reference set. We have done that before. And uh, so the idea is you have this reference set and you want to have all the IP address of all the bad sites and command and control sites, sites that you know they're bad. But how do you populate that actual reference set? Well, you could write some code and again, we've shown examples of that, that uses the RESTful API to talk to those sites to actually get them to populate those that reference set with that site but what we'll see is that we don't have to write any code because there is an app that is a threat intelligent app that does all that work for us we don't have to do any coding and this threat intelligent app works with the x-force data so the x-force populates that uh, or, but you can actually make it work with any uh, Soltra or any other stick and taxi type of uh, so without any coding whatsoever and it's free let me show you how you actually get that you go into the curator console on the admin tab as we've done before some other videos extension management you go into the security app exchange and there's a very many goodies in here and uh, we may uh, do an updated video on it but let me go straight to the point this threat intelligence app when you click on it and you see the details of it uh, basically the idea is to get that type of screen in which the threat intelligence data is actually sent sent uh, to us and you get uh, some more uh, description of it uh, on how that works. So I downloaded that. It's trivial to actually install it. We've shown that on, on other videos. And we have that uh, that uh, application nicely installed as we see here. Right? Good. Once you have it installed, you need to actually get some uh, user ID and password from the X-Force. It's free. You can actually do that and go here into the stick and taxi configuration and uh, to add a threat uh, taxi feed, you actually need to have a token and you get that token that that's precisely the user ID and password that you get uh, from the site. And as we see here, this has already been, uh, been started to be populated uh, to that botnet command and control uh, server. Uh, reference set. Let's take a look at the reference set. So again from the same admin console we go here to the reference sets reference set management and we see that this one in particular the botnet CNC IP has been actually been populated and we can actually see the actual uh, set of IPs put by the X-Force. Again, you can get this from Soltra. You can add yourself uh, a specific I IPs that you know that they are bad. Uh, very cool. So we already have 
that reference set not only being created for us, but is automatically being kept up to date via that uh, stick and taxi connection. We are ready to write the rule that works with such reference set, but again, we don't have to do that because there is another package, another application on that uh, has that rule created for us. Let's take a look at it. So here is, we go back to the app exchange and this is the particular package that has the rules that we want. We want to see uh, the details of the rules that it creates for us. These are the one. And this is particularly the, the rule that we want to use. So I again, I downloaded the package, installed the application that was trivial and that gave me this rule. So we go to the offenses tab, we go to the rules, and we're going to look for that a rule. And it was, let me look for it, but F R F I S I, and look for those other rules. And here they are. And this is the one that got added for us, ready to work with that reference set that is being kept up to date by the other application. So, as we've done in other videos, these are the logs that we're going to use for testing this particular rule and these were collected by a blue code proxy and this is the syntax of it and, and this is again, uh, the, this particular IP is already in the reference set that we want this to fire with. Shown before, this is actually, I wanted to uh, show you the uh, script that I'm going to uh, trigger in a minute that uses the log run command to actually uh, put the, that text that we just saw in there to in the log run command. We are spoofing the IP address because we want to use our internal proxy uh, that we have, which is 10.64.2.14. And let's, so let's actually go ahead and fire that up. Let me actually, before I fire it, let me go to the log console as we've done before and put the, in, in the log activity screen. We are there. Let's actually fire that and we see the actual events being play here. So notice that the destination IP is uh, that one that is known a command and control site and we uh, the source IP is the one that we asked uh, the log run command to spoof which is this is our uh, proxy. And if we go to the offenses tab we actually see our nice rule uh, fire on that uh, particular event. Again, as we've done before, we can show that uh, the rule that fired that particular offense is this one, and this is the actual event that we replay with the log run command. And we should recognize this uh, particular event. Again, very cool way of doing all this without writing a code, without even creating a rule, getting the content from the app exchange, which is free to all curator users.